Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently Thursday the 9th of June, it's about 25 to 11 and I'm going to Paris tomorrow. So this is the Paris reading vlog. Um, I'm travelling solo, uh, I am meeting a couple of clients while I'm there and um, yeah it should be really good. I've got lots planned so I'm going to take you along with me. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. Dane reads. I keep forgetting to film stuff, but I'm through passport control and in departures with a beer. That's what we do. The voluntary fighters of the resistance.
even bigger. Il devait aller sur ses 28 ans. Il a eu Quel grand repas. Ça a l'air bon. C'est Gigi. Salut Gigi. Salut. Tu es un petit chaton. Yo, ok, it's my last, my last evening here. Oh, let's pause that. I've just been watching Red Dwarf on my laptop. I've watched a lot of Red Dwarf. I've watched like four seasons while I've been away. Um, it's happy hour at the bar. So I'm going to go down to the bar in a second. I'll uh, update you on what I got up to when I got back. I mean, the video clips should be a good indicator, I think. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to just show you the room. So there's my laptop. I've just had some more. I had more of that vegan food from that delicious vegan food place. 
and that's that's pretty much the room so yeah so that's where I've been staying and I'm now going to go and drink some beer because I'm just I'm very full oh that was good food <laughs> Yo, it is me. It is currently 20 to 10 on Saturday the 18th of June. So, uh, yeah, I left it a little bit of a while before catching up. Basically, since I got home, I've just been crazy busy. I'll update you on all of that soon. But I basically want to talk to you about Paris. So, um, I guess we'll go back to the Friday. So, I went to St Pancras. Uh, in London to go and get the Eurostar. I went to, I think it was called Circe Champagne Bar, which was like a champagne bar near to uh, the Eurostar, because um, I had time, so I was like, I'm gonna have a beer. And uh, yeah, they told me to sit down and somebody would be over to me and to take my order. And I waited for 20 minutes and nobody came. And then the gate opened for check-in. So I just went in to the, through to the check-in. Did have a beer on the other side though, so that was nice. Once I got onto the train, uh, there was a lady sitting next to me. Um, so I let her share my plug so we could both charge our phones. And I was sitting there reading uh, Harry Potter on L'Ecole des Sorcières which is the first Harry Potter book in French. So I managed to f read all of that while I was away. I also had a Dune book that I had going on while I was there too. And um, yeah, so I read that while we were on the way. 
and then um, arrived in Paris at probably a half eight-ish um, and it was only about three kilometers to my hotel so I decided to go for a walk through Paris I mean I did have my rucksack on my case um, main problem was that I really needed a wee and actually I did notice because um, the thing was is uh, they had toilets at the at the, the Garden or station but you had to pay um, and obviously you needed euros sorry my washing machines beeping at me uh, you needed euros to pay for it and obviously I'd only just got there so I didn't have any change so I couldn't, I couldn't pay for it. So obviously that was a bit of a fail. Uh, I did notice a lot of the people on the train with me. And they literally, well there were people off from the station and then just like random people outside just weeing against walls. One of my big observations of Paris is that everyone just pisses in public apparently. Um, but yes, yeah, so I really needed the toilet but I didn't want to piss against a wall. So I started walking off and then went to a bar. Uh, ordered a pint there and went to the toilet at the bar. Um, got to practice my French for the first time. Uh, Excusez-moi, monsieur, où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Je veux une beer, merci. Um, so I drank that beer, went to the hotel, checked in. The hotel was a weird place. I looked on TripAdvisor and it's got a lot of like two star reviews. Um, because it is, it's not really a hotel, it's kind of in between a hostel and a hotel I suppose. It actually reminded me of my old uh, room at university. Um, the, the weird thing there that a lot of people picked up in the reviews is that they asked people to throw toilet paper into the bin rather than flushing it. So the toilets kind of smell like shit because there was just all this shitty paper in a bin. So that was weird. Um, but yes. Um, my, so my room, it, it was like a shared bathroom sort of situation. Um, my room as well, the view from it, I just, it was a view into like a little tiny courtyard within the building where they had all the aircon and stuff. And my plug socket fell off the wall as well, but it still worked. It was just quite dangerous. Um, but yeah, checked in there. The people there were really nice. There was also a cat there, which I learned was named Gigi or Kiki, after Kiki the Sorcerer from Studio Ghibli. Uh, the guy, I can't remember his name, I think it was called Zane, the guy who ran it. Um, so he was quite cool. So yeah, I had another drink there. Uh, like, um, well, I didn't really unpack my stuff. I unpacked the most important stuff. And then I'd been having a little look around um, to try and find somewhere with some live music on. And everywhere was like 25 euros to get in, except for this one place that was an Irish bar. So I went to this bar, which was about a mile, about a mile away. Um, went in, ordered a drink, sat down and had my drink. I was right by the stage and I was sitting there writing in my notebook, all good. Then I went outside for a vape just before the band came on and then they wouldn't let me back in. Um, they never explained why. So that was the first place I essentially got kicked out of. So then I walked back to the hotel. I tried to stop off at another bar on the way because I could hear a lot of drunk English people singing Hey Jude. Um, but that turned out to be a private party. There was just no signage up for it or whatever. So I got kicked out of there as well. So I ended up just going back to the hotel bar and having another drink there and then getting a relatively early night because I was pretty tired from the journey. Uh, so Saturday the 11th of June, I woke up probably about 10am, um, it was one of those, the walls were kind of paper thin there, so as soon as other people got up, I kind of had no choice, but it was good because I normally very much like an afternoon person, so all the time I was there I was getting up in the mornings and actually making the most of my time, you know. Um, so I had planned to go to a flea market, but it was on the other side of town, I didn't really fancy it. So I walked to the Louvre. I tried to order a vegan panini from this place and um, the guy said, yeah, that's fine. And I waited there for about 15 minutes and then he came and said it was going to be about another 45 minutes because they hadn't actually opened yet. And I was like, okay, you could have told me that before, but never mind. So I left there, ended up going somewhere else. I got some a drink and I had a coffee, a, un café noir. Um, but unfortunately, that gave me heart palpitations because I'm not used to having black coffee and I have anxiety. So I ended up, I tried to walk it off, walked around for a little bit, uh, went to a supermarket and got like some water and some Oreos because I was like, maybe, I'm, maybe it's my blood sugar, you know. So I had those um, and then I went to the Louvre because I had tickets to get in. But basically, even with tickets, it was like pre-booked only, but the queue stretched back like all the way across the platform. There must have been probably about a thousand people in the queue kind of thing um, and it was really hot as well and obviously I was super anxious so I didn't want to wait in this queue for hours so I ended up walking back to the hotel um, and then I put Red Dwarf on my laptop and lay down and had a bit of an anxiety sleep did feel better after that though so then I went onto the subway actually for the first time and went to the catacombs and um, so that was pretty good when I got there I was a little bit early so I was gonna go and sit on this park bench and read my Harry Potter book 
and then a homeless French man came up to me and started speaking to me asking me for money so I did my uh, sorry I'm English I don't understand the language uh, did that little act um, and literally I'd read two pages of my book by that point and then I had to get up and go away because he smelled terrible like kind of like sour milk um, so yeah, then I went to join the queue for the catacombs and wandered around there. So that was really good. Definitely enjoyed that and would recommend that. This was my birthday as well, by the way. It was a bit of a fail birthday, really. But, you know, I'm actually celebrating it tomorrow with a little barbecue here. Um, but yeah, so that was pretty much it for that day, I think. I, I got Oh, I got a copy of Pet Cemetery in, in French from the gift shop. Some magnets and things like that. Uh, and then headed back to the hotel. Sunday, there was another flea market, but again, it was on the other side of town, couldn't really be bothered just for a flea market. So what I did instead was I went to the two graveyards. So I started with uh, Montparnasse graveyard, where I saw like Guy de Maupassant and Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir and a bunch of bunch of those people. Uh, I had a little chat to a French lady who was there as well. Um, so she she was actually cleaning the like her family's tomb kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I chatted to her in French and she asked me if I was looking for Baudelaire and she gave me directions to that and then she said, uh, like, Guy de Maupassant's over there. And I was like, oui, je sais, je l'ai vu. Uh, je l'ai vu encore. So, told her that I'd already seen that one and yeah, she was nice. Um, Potted around for a bit, I wrote a poem uh, by Sartre and de Beauvoir's grave as well. I'll link below because I kept a full journal while I was there, so I'll link below to that. Um, and then... Because I'd had such a good time there, uh, I know it sounds weird to have a good time in the graveyard, but it was really beautiful and, you know, lots of writers and stuff. So yeah, then I went to Père Lachaise, which is the most famous cemetery, that's where Oscar Wilde is and Jim Morrison and a bunch of other people. Um, so I popped around there and that was really beautiful, like the first one was a graveyard with some trees. And this other one was like, it reminded me of the National uh, Arboretum here in the UK, which is like a war memorial. But it's just set in these stunning grounds. Um, and it was just a beautiful place to walk around with lots of like trees and nature and all of this stuff. So I went on my sort of literary pilgrimage there. Um, then in the evening there was an open mic on but I decided not to go to it because I'd not had much luck, um, you know, with the bars. So that brings us to Monday. What did I do on Monday? Monday I went to the Eiffel Tower. Um, so that wasn't too bad. The queues weren't too bad. Um, I went up, not all the way to the top, I went up to like halfway, had some really great views and then stopped off for a beer there as well. Um, and again, like chatted to a few people here and there, there were some Russians and some Germans and things. Uh, really great views of the city. And then after that, I was going to try the Louvre again. Um, so I went along to it, but you needed to have pre-booked and obviously I pre-booked for the Saturday and not on the Monday. So that would be my lesson is pre-book on the Monday because that time the queue, there were probably about 10% as men, 10% uh, of the people there. So like a queue of a hundred rather than a thousand. So I think I would have got in within about 20 minutes or so. Um, but I'm not too worried. Like I would have, I would have liked to have seen the Mona Lisa and I wanted to check out the antiquities, but that's about it really. Um, so after that I went to the post office to send some postcards that I'd got. I went to uh, the National Library as well, but that was closed even though it was supposed to be open. I also got kicked out of the first post office that I tried to go to because uh, I didn't have a mask with me. So then I'd picked up my, my mask back from the hotel just so I could go to a post office. And it turns out it was only that one post office where masks were compulsory. Uh, that morning I also got kicked out of a bookshop because I bought, bought a coffee because this vegan coffee shop was uh, that was around the corner. It wasn't open at the weekend but it was open on the Monday and the Tuesday. Um, but that was alright because I left that place and that was a brand new place. And then just a little further along there was a second hand bookshop. So I bought a load of books from there. I ate some really good food while I was away as well. I had some like vegan Thai food and then there was a vegan burger place that I went to twice because for about 20 euros you got uh, fries, nachos, a cookie, a burger and a drink. So I was happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, what did I do after that? Then I went back to the hotel. I think then I just had a drink at the hotel and went to bed pretty early. Um, and then Tuesday was checkout day. So I checked out, I uh, had my case, and I went back to that second-hand bookshop, actually. And then I ended up going to meet my clients, which was kind of the reason why I was there in the first place. And we ended up going to Les Deux Magots, uh, which is Majo, I think, actually. Which I thought meant the two maggots, but it means the two majors. Um, and that was a bar that Hemingway used to drink at. And we had some lunch there, I had a salad, and it was nice to catch up with those guys. 
um, sort of said goodbye to them and then went off to go on my boat tour of the Seine. Before I got there as well, there were all these little secondhand bookshops along the Seine, so I picked up some cool books from there, so that was cool. Uh, and yeah, then went on my boat tour, and that was great because the guy was speaking in English. Uh, well, he spoke in French first and then in English, so I could listen in French, and I could pretty much understand what he was talking about, um, and then I just had to check with the English, so that was cool. And then, yeah, then I walked from there back to uh, the Garden Nord and took the Eurostar home. So I got in at about 11 p.m. And then just about kind of unpacked. And then the next day, <laughs> the next day I went to uh, Leamington Spa. Got picked up from Leamington Spa Station by my friend Subi to go and speak at a writer's group that she's involved in. So that was really good. Uh, they had a lot of really good questions. We were there. I was probably there for about two hours just answering questions. I didn't really prepare anything because I knew they had a bunch of questions about self-publishing um, so yeah I talked to them about that and then came home and then pretty much flopped um, Thursday I had uh, the dentist so I had well I had a bunch of calls because my calls started up and then I had the dentist at 2 p.m. so I had um, a crown fitted and then three fillings so that was that and then Friday I had really bad hay fever today is Saturday and today I've been basically preparing all day making all this food because we're having a barbecue tomorrow here I've got um, Sabrina's coming over Dave who's the guy I'm in the band with and his housemate Amanda and then Fran from the art center and her son Hugo they're all coming over we're gonna have a little vegan barbecue so I've been prepping a bunch of the food and stuff today made like cupcakes made some crispy kale and uh, a salad using the kale and the lettuce from my garden potato salad from the potatoes in my garden um, so a lot of homegrown produce and stuff so that's really exciting and I made some cupcakes as well so that is pretty much where I'm at I should give you some updates on books as well so obviously I finished reading Harry Potter à l'école des sorcières that for me was a probably a four out of five it was just Harry Potter it was actually really interesting to read because a lot of the words have been changed so Hogwarts is Poodlar um, Snape is he becomes rogue Filch and Mrs. Norris have different names. A lot of the houses have different names. Um, so it was just fun to sort of see what had changed and what kept the same. Um, and a lot of it made sense. Like the sorting hat became Le Schwapo. The, the sorting hat became Le Schwapo Magique, but schwa, uh, Schwapo rather than Chapo. So Chapo is hat, and they use Schwa, which means choice. So it's like the cho the magic choosing hat, but Schwapo. It's like a portmanteau. I thought that was really fun. So that was interesting. And then I read um, Navigators of Dune, which is the last of the final new Dune books that I hadn't read. There is The Road to Dune, which I now have as well. Um, so I'll get to that soon. But that's like more of a biography of Frank Herbert with a novella in it. Um, but yeah, Navigators of Dune was really good as well. I gave that a four out of five. Then I read um, A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin, which was a 4.5 out of five for me. But I don't. I didn't like tab it out or anything, it was just a really well written thriller with lots of twists and turns and some perspective changes that worked really well. It's just like a masterclass in writing really. So uh, Levin is rapidly becoming one of my new favourite authors but um, I still would say Rosemary's Baby was my favourite and then this one comes second, A Kiss Before Dying and then third we have The Stepford Wives and then I've read like one or two of his others. And I'm now reading Five Patients by Michael Crichton and um, that is basically about I mean, he used to work in an ER. He created the TV show ER, um, but it's all based on his experience as a doctor. And it's really fascinating because it's all, I think it was written in like the late 60s. So it's interesting to see like his predictions about the future of healthcare and whether they came about. Like a lot of them are still really only just happening now. Like he talked about telemedicine. So telemedicine is a bit like when you have a Zoom call with a doctor. Um, and that was happening back in the 60s. It was just in black and white and like obviously I think it probably was over the internet um, I don't know. I would assume it was over the internet um, Obviously not the web because the web hadn't been invented, but the internet had been I don't know actually it didn't didn't really explain exactly how it worked just that it did um, I mean it was literally from 2.5 miles away So it was a hospital near an airport and that's what they used at the airport because they couldn't justify having a full-time member of staff all the time but also it would have taken him ages to drive through the rush hour traffic to the airport every time they had somebody in. So yeah, I'm almost finished that. And yeah, that's probably gonna be a four out of five, I think. And then after that, I guess I'm gonna read A Walk Through the Woods by Bill Bryson. It depends, because I've got a bunch of books to haul as well. So I, this is my first time filming since getting back. 
and it's almost midnight which is my cut off point for filming and then obviously tomorrow I have people around so I don't know if I'll get a chance um, but I wanted to film this bit as soon as I could before things I started to forget things you know and I think I'm going to leave this week's vlog uh, because that's a nice little place to leave it so as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye-bye.